So welcome everyone to the first meeting of the sustainability, uh, the climate and sustainability task force coordination meeting. Um, for anyone who is here with us, hi Perry, or anyone who may be watching later, let's just go around and introduce myself, introduce ourselves. I'm Stephen Ehrenberg. I'm on the school committee. Uh, Dean, go ahead. Uh, Dean Cody, I'm on the subcommittee for food, uh, for food waste, food services, healthy foods. Roger. I am Roger Grandy, BHS social studies teacher. I'm on the curriculum task force or subcommittee. Eric. Hi, I'm Eric Colburn, Brooklyn High School English teacher, and I'm on the um, transportation uh, task force. And Christy. Hi, I'm Christy Electris. I'm a peer school parent mm -hmm. and on the um, energy building and outdoor space task force. Thanks, everyone. So um, for those of you who don't know, who may be tuning in later, this task force is mandated to do three things. It's mandated first to inventory the town's assets that may be useful to uh, public schools of Brookline in improving its sustainability and climate education writ broadly. Um, secondly, it's responsible for issuing recommendations. And thirdly, it's responsible for presenting those recommendations with an eye towards making them feasible and implementable in the short term. The um, Climate and Sustainability Task Force is divided into four groups. Um, those groups are represented by their chairs, and they have about three to five people per group. Those groups are the Education and Engagement Group that focuses primarily on curriculum and content, the Energy Buildings and Outdoor Spaces Group, the Food Services and Waste Group, and the Transportation Group. Those groups uh, correlate to the sustainability policy that the school committee passed in, I want to say, November 2022. And with that preamble out of the way, this is really just a working session of the coordination uh, team so we could discuss where we're at, what further assistance may be needed. And I think for this for this meeting, we really just want to discuss where we are with the inventory task and whether we're on pace to complete it um, in the next couple of months or whether we need to push that out further. That's what I'm thinking anyway. So I think maybe we just start by going around and saying where we are with each of the with each of the groups. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Sure. Okay. Should we start with you, Roger, the education and engagement group? Yes. Thank you. Um, hello. Um, we have uh, devoted our time so far, and actually we're trying to get this to be at about 99% by the end of today, to um, creating a survey that would go out to all, uh, if not teachers, maybe more broadly, some other educators as well, where relevant. Uh, that is sort of a kind of informal sur uh, inventory of uh, what student, what teaching and learning is happening around climate change, sustainability, uh, and especially for younger grades, kind of the, you know, foundational knowledge that leads to understanding of sustainability and climate. Uh, and the, you know, we want to reach a wide variety or, you know, of um, disciplines, obviously for the younger grades, they primarily have uh, one classroom teacher, so I think they're specials, but we want to make sure that we have um, input from across the grades, from across the schools, uh, across the disciplines. Um, so we are kind of in the final stages of completing our survey that we'll send out. We're trying to keep it really short and manageable. Uh, that would encourage people to fill it out, and then we'll send that out. Um, I don't know if I should keep going, but the idea is then to kind of examine the results and use that as the basis for beginning to make recommendations for how to proceed and kind of build a sustainability, um, uh, you know, run through K to pre-K to 12. Um, how is it going? Do you feel that you're on track? Does it, do you feel confident about the process that you're You've been engaged in so far. Yeah, I mean, we've we got a, a, I think a really good group and committed. Um, again, I think we're really close to finalizing the survey. You know, the next question is who will fill it out. Um, 
So we'll probably look for some help from uh, the superintendent's office or Office of Teaching and Learning and from curriculum coordinators in particular to encourage um, relevance, but you know, we do. Um, so, uh, you know, we kind of, you know, thinking broadly about sustainability, it's about also about mental health and resilience. So we certainly want to, you know, intersect with health and wellness um, and make it as um, interdisciplinary as possible as far as the information we're collecting. But yeah, I think we're generally moving along as to where we want it to be. Um, but we'll see what kind of results we get. So Roger, I'm thinking I could I could be the liaison to the administration. I could reach out to Dr. Fortuna and the administration on behalf of the group. I also reached out to uh, Justin Brown of the BEU, and I'm going to meet him on Monday. and And I asked him if he if BEU might be interested in promoting the survey, and we could discuss that on Monday as well. Yeah, that'd be um, fantastic. Okay, and you were copied on that. I think the initial yes. back and forth, but then I put you on BCC, so not to drown you. Any other, any, are there any other, does anyone else in the group have any questions for Roger? Or any ideas for how to promote the survey? The audience for the survey again, you said is, is, um, is educators. The is educators, educators themselves. Yeah. Okay. I think we have to sort of decide, you know, to how broadly, certainly classroom teachers, you know, I'm especially interested in health and wellness, but it may not always make sense. Um, you know, depending on the grade level and, uh, you know, I don't know enough about what happens across mm -hmm. the district in different grades and schools. So, uh, you know, I think I would like to, I wrote to the others on the committee today to, uh, you know, we did a round of getting, soliciting some feedback on the design of the survey. And I think I would like to share with a few other people, just a little bit representative across the district of educators to just quickly take the survey and, you know, be able to say, you know what, for, fifth grade teachers, this question doesn't really make sense or, you know, to get that kind of feedback. Okay. Any questions that you have for the group, Roger, or anything that you want the rest of us to, to mull over? Uh, I, I really do see this meeting as, as a working meeting for all of yeah. us, despite yeah, the no, publicness of it. No, I appreciate that. I think um, at the moment, no, but I think it's going to be hard to really think about sort of what makes sense as far as building our recommendations, you know, beyond the survey, um, sort of how those will be received, what their utility is. I mean, you know, there are, it, and partly it reflects, um, you know, when Christy and I sort of met several years ago, you know, we were kind of imagining, I guess, this task force in a way, um, but really trying to think about sustainability as a core value and or practice in the district. Um, and at the same time, we don't want to appear like people asking teachers to, to do work. You know, it has to be, if there's interest, you know, it has to be supported with professional development. Like I understand there are costs involved and that's, there's competing interests, et cetera. Um, you know, and I think there's several people who feel like, well, this is going to impact, you know, increasingly climate change is going to impact everybody. And so it's really important to provide these skills and insights to students as they, you know, leave at 12th grade and go into the world. Um, but, you know, there are many other things students need to have as well. So I think just trying to find, you know, uh, you know, kind of where this, think about where this heads and how to make it sort of interesting and attractive and sound um, compelling uh, for the reasons that it really is. Um, and then to be able to, you know, not be like, well, teachers want this, but the district's not backing up on it, backing it up. So we, you know, right. just kind of finding how to do that in a way that's, that's doable. Okay. I, I do have one other comment, I guess. Um, I just became aware with the most recent email that um, the superintendent is looking for final comments on the Brookline strategic public school Brookline strategic plan, mm -hmm. but I hadn't noticed that process happening in the background. But I, I was wondering, has sustainability and this process been brought up in that context? Um, 
because it seems like that would have been or could be a natural place to embed it into some of the educational and some other outcomes of the so, next three to four year plan. So in the um so if you if you look at the strategic plan at the at the beginning of it, it has the new core values of Brookline. And there's a new sixth core value, which is an ethic of wellness, which which has two pieces of it. One is an individual, which is more about socio, uh, social and emotional health. But the second part is more about, um, is about, I think we call it, how do we phrase it? Is uh, care for the earth, uh, a care for a more collective care. Um, and that was the school committee's effort to embed sustainability as a core value um, however, I, the the creation of the um, strategic plan activities kind of proceeded on a parallel track, and then we kind of brought the core values and strategic plan activities together, and it was kind of an iterative process, and there were some gaps. So I'm not sure that there really are activities around um, sustainability uh, like standalone discrete activities. So that's why I kind of see this process as something that might fill that gap. The strategic plan isn't a static document though. Dr. Guillory said repeatedly that it's gonna evolve over the years. So ideally this task force would be an input into a, another iteration of the strategic plan. Does that help? Does that answer your question, Christy? Uh, it does. And I, I'm glad to see that I, I didn't, catch that the ethic of wellness core value it's new included it's new. It. The, there were five previously and that's the new sixth one i was happy to see that too i saw i saw that in this word sustainability and the word you know about students being educated to tackle kind of the new world order with climate change is there that's good but i i too was wondering steve about what activities but it seems like the work that this group is doing will fill that out. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So maybe, maybe that's something to, when we get to the recommendations part of this, of this task force's work, maybe we could think of that as, as a concrete deliverable as recommending mm -hmm. specific strategic plan activities for the next iteration. What could, what would belong in the next round of the strategic plan for in each of those areas, what would be an activity? I mean, it's, it's, it's really just a framing question, right? Like, because the recommendations have to take some form anyway, but we could plug it into the strategic plan. That, that could be the platform. Maybe it's a better way to put it. That, that could be the platform for how we present those recommendations. Um, I go ahead. As well. You know, thinking about education or teaching and learning, you know, it's not, we're not conceiving of this as um, as uh, sort of narrowly, you know, simply teacher directed or whatever, you know, student, um, you know, traditional learning in the classroom. Um, but you know, one of the gifts of <clears throat> adopting sustainability as a as a um, core practice is that it leads you, you know, very quickly to interdisciplinary work, to experiential learning, to outside work, you know, to gardening. Um, you know, it's like, it can potentially be very rich. You know, it's not like it's an, I don't want us to think of uh, sustainability education as like a, simply as an add-on, but in some ways kind of a reconceptualization that's not simply about sustainability, but about, you know, using what I think generally people regard as like best practices, but they take some time and thinking and collaboration to really implement those. You know, doing a project-based learning or especially interdisciplinary at the high school, you know, it's very hard to make that happen uh, just given our schedule and, you know, the uh, obligations that people feel to their own discipline. Um, so it's understandable. But again, I, I really think of sustainability um, education as this incredible opportunity to be uh, transformative in, in many ways. Yeah, I think that's definitely clearly been your orientation all along, that it's, it's an integrated approach it's an your approach has been integrative not like your recommendation is unlikely to be a, a curriculum purchase for instance like a, it's not a new subject to squeeze into right. a packed schedule right. 
Okay, let's let's keep going with the with the updates. Um, let's go to group two: energy buildings and outdoor spaces. Yes, so we actually um, have met a couple times now. Um, we are to do the assessment. What we've understood is mostly it's the building and energy, the outdoor spaces. Um, we're not looking at the gardens per se, but potentially the materials. Um, so we're really trying to get the assessment done on the sustainability practices within the buildings um, and energy use. Um, there's a, we've been getting a lot of great information from Helen Charlupsky, who has been involved in so many of the building projects and, and has a lot of knowledge, but we haven't yet been able to connect directly with um, the building department manager because of the just the town meeting was taking up a lot of their time, right. his time and his department's time. It's a pretty slim department. So um, what we've decided to do is um, set up our own assessment kind of spreadsheet. Um, we have some great, <laughs> really great um, knowledgeable people on the task force that do this kind of work with schools um, uh, for a living. So it's been really great to hear their understanding and thinking about how we're gonna go forward with it. Um, so we're gonna try to fill some of that out, go back to it's Charlie Simmons and his team, um, see what else he can add. And the second part was we were hoping to actually get to the building itself, um, but not all of them, but get to a, some sample of buildings, do a walkthrough and maybe here, for example, yeah, I saw um, there was a, a there was an invite going around for Driscoll. Is that where you're going first? Well, that was the thought was to do a, kind of the most progressed um, sustainability um, infrastructure in our in our town um, and and take a site visit of Driscoll. That's a tentative date, and I guess we could talk with Helen. Uh, maybe that we can invite others on the you know um, task force to do that if they'd like to, because I know there's different aspects across the different task force that might be interested in seeing the building. Um, and then we were saying to do one of the older buildings that would take longer to renovate because mm -hmm. there is sort of this cycle of approximately every 10 years, the town is doing one of the schools. Um, so, you know, maybe having one of the ones that might be there and untouched for the next 20 years would be one to look at so we can understand what kind of sustainability upgrades could we see are kind of needed or where are the low hanging fruit so that, that assessment. Um, Will be done. The great news is again, we've heard from Helen about sort of the continual slow but steady progress that is being done on different buildings, as well as the really jumps between each new school project that's kind of now, you know, Driscoll going to geothermal. Um, the next school will, you know, start with geothermal rather than add it in later. So there'll right. be a lot, you know, there's um, there's a lot of that sort of discussion that we've been having. Um, I think I had one other update. Oh, so um, the other, the third component is because we don't have kind of direct access to the building department yet. And, and this is maybe different because the, the town's building department is responsible for the school's building. So it's a little different than working with um, the school district itself. Um, we were able to look at the open gov data. So there is mm -hmm. an open gov data um, source for energy use. So we are going to kind of extract that data and use that to help fill in some of the story um, and hopefully get more from, from Charlie Simmons when he's available. That's great. That's great. Are, who, are there any... Um... Are there any other external stakeholders in town that you have been meeting with or that you need access to that you've been trying to get access to that you've been needing help with? We haven't been working on getting access to anyone else, but be open to thinking about who else we could um, hear from. I think um, my thought process was that we were going to try to do the assessment, the initial assessment, um, and then Maybe, I don't know if all the task forces are doing this together or if individually as Roger sort of has the education survey, but um, if we were to kind of present our assessment and then get feedback after that. So maybe we missed something or there's things that people think aren't as good as we, you know, represent um, to get that feedback from the, there's a lot of people like each school building um, has individuals as well that would have a lot of insight, but we didn't want to burden like because again the buildings are managed not by the right. school department we don't want to burden like principals with this yet um but there may be 
there may be some insight within the school in terms of recommendations of what they think could do that would be better in terms of practices. So there's one thing about the infrastructure, and then there's the other part about like what are people doing and how they use their energy. Are they plugging in? And this is a peer specific thing. Plugging in a lot of stuff into one outlet, um, or mm. have too much load, things like that that people would know in the building and that don't isn't necessarily managed at a operational standpoint. Turning lights off, things like that. <laughs> are there any areas that you? need a need any kind of help from this group with or any areas where you feel like you're struggling that you want to mull something over with the rest of us not yet i feel like okay. we're maybe not as as far ahead as uh as others but just we're happy that we're getting the data down um and uh gonna put the inquiry back to the building department okay we can't find okay let's keep going i had a, a oh, question for uh, Christy, has Helen uh, mentioned anything, or Steve, you probably know this too, about uh, solar panel installation on, you know, some of the newer buildings, the Ridley, the 22 TAP, and the new STEM? I mean, is anything like yeah. that, any grants and stuff? Yeah, so we talked about it briefly. Um, we actually had a meeting this week. So um, we discussed how part of the challenge is, you know, buying those solar panels outright. It's costs a lot up front and so there has been discussion about leasing but they were hoping that with the Pierce project like doing some sort of lease or development agreement um, with the Pierce project they're hoping it's an ad what is it called uh, ad optional or something like that where if there's budget enough left and if the price of the I mean it's possible that the price of the panels will have gone down by the time we we're done building Pierce that that could be added on, but it'll be completely solar ready, ready to go with all the wiring. Um, that's my understanding. Oh, there, um, one of the one of our uh, members is also um, see, Matthew Yamaton. One of the members on our um, committee is uh, works for a company that does a lot of this solar development and has offered some services to help us figure out how to take advantage because as a nonprofit educational institution or, or a town, a governmental agency, we can't do the tax benefits of developing the solar in the same way that another developer can. So there are ways to make it even more advantageous to install. Mm -hmm. um, so owning it not, isn't necessarily the best option for the town's purposes. So mm -hmm. um, we're going to you know, hopefully those that conversation will con continue uh, in a parallel track to figure out how we can help support, you know, whatever That's existing great. solar opportunities are. That's great. Any other questions? Uh, there, there was one other comment that reminded me, though, that um, the Peer School Project will have a, a meeting at the beginning of January um, that will be all about ability and they'll be of it an open meeting uh, so i i can send around that date or you know. cut out just a little bit just now christy you want to say that again oh i said that um the pierce can you hear me now mm -hmm. the yeah. pierce school project will be having the architects or um, project manager will be having a meeting in january i think the 11th um that helen can share the information with too right. but um if you if people want to hear kind of every aspect that, that's been planned in um that that would be a good place to be is is Ridley Solar ready? Do you know? Yes, I believe it was. Um, I not from my recent research. That would be important to know about all of these buildings. Is twenty two tap and solar ready? Is Driscoll Solar I ready? I don't know because I know that twenty two tap and also had the heating something upstairs. Well, we can look into all of that. So that that will yeah. be like part of our check boxes and. Right, um, right, right. Part of the yeah. Yeah. Inventory. Good. Just two quick comments. One is, you know, again, being focused on sort of teaching. I mean, I kind of like the idea around sustainability that um, that all our work is um, transparent to to students. You know, that we're sort of modeling as an institution. Our institution, you know, for we're not doing solar, we're letting students know that it's not a value. Um, and if we are doing solar, we're letting them know that yeah, this is a really important value, and we care about your future. So. You know, to the extent it can, I just like the idea that there's some transparency, like maybe there's a, 
a visible meter when students walk in the building or a sign that says, you know, 8% of this building, solar power or something like that. Um, and then the other thing is I don't really know him well, but this guy who lives across the street from me um, runs one of the, I think it's a nonprofit. They do a lot of solar installation on nonprofits. I mean, their focus has been on churches, um, probably around Massachusetts, New England. I'm not really sure. I, can, I, I can't remember the name Sunwell? of this company. What's that? Is it Res Resonant? Is Where's that the company Sunwell? Resonant? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, They're very good. Yeah, it's a guy named Chris with reddish hair. That's kind of what I remember. Uh, I, don't, I barely ever see him. But anyway, you know, I don't know if that's like a, a, a way to go. Roger, it just occurs to me also that group one should, shouldn't um, be restricted to the classroom. So when, when you think about things like um, communications materials for kids or uh, for students or other ways to uh, raise awareness or create transparency. It doesn't need to be classroom-based. It could be elsewhere at the school. And, and yeah. my understanding is that the buildings have been, the newer buildings have been talking about, I, I don't know if Driscoll has it, but um, Pierce, I think they talked about a dashboard on sort of sustainability. Yeah, things yeah. So you can kind of see how much energy. Really? Yeah, that's, cool. that's, what, that's what Helen mentioned, but I don't know if it was implemented or if it was a vision, so. I'm in the middle of the school committee I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, <laughs> let's move on to the third group. You can watch the meeting if you want. You want to watch the meeting? All right. Um, let's move on to the third group. Third uh, group, food services and waste. So over sure. So, okay. So food services and waste. Well, we do have a very engaged group, very energetic. It's wonderful. Um, we have, everybody is a parent or grandparent with children in the school. They, they see and hear about the lunches and breakfasts, you know, day to day. So we get good feedback that way. Plus we have one high school student, Ezra Kleinbaum, who is very knowledgeable, you know, eats at the high school. And he has invited two more of his uh, uh, colleagues, students to join, which we would love to have them join. So they're going through the process now. And I hope that happens because the more we hear from, the students, in my opinion, the better. So I'm thrilled about that. Um, to we are clear on that, just to be transparent. Um, so we're we're having those students submit applications. I'm going to review those applications, and because there is some attrition on in the entire task force, if they are sufficiently strong, which I can't imagine they wouldn't be, they will be accepted onto the task force to replace those who left. Excellent. That's really yeah. good news. And we are getting really tremendous support from Sasha Palmer, you know, Director of Food Service, as well as Rebecca Salguero, who's fantastic and knows the ins and outs and is a dedicated sustainability coordinator for food service. So all the, we see, we have seen tremendous improvement since she was able to come on board, you know, beginning of September, but just wonderful things have happened. And I know from six years of composting in the high school, all of these things that have happened since uh, she started wouldn't have happened yet. And I can't even imagine how long it would take. So that's one of the takeaways that we will be putting into recommend as a recommendation is that uh, having dedicated sustainability staff is seems to us to be pretty essential. So some of the positive new developments and since Rebecca has started and so meaning this year, is well we have the the winter garden thanks to roger and sasha and others but that idea of growing um you know locally local food in the cafeteria greens and serving them in the salad bar is just wonderful tremendous and seeing that uh you know go out to the other schools eventually is really extremely positive and the fact that driscoll on day one of their new school fully operational with composting, fully operational with all reusable trays and silverware and everything is pretty remarkable, I have to say. I didn't think that would happen. And the fact that almost every school has an electric dishwasher now installed, functioning, and mostly used, not entirely, that they're still working on that. Um, because without the dishwashers, there 
we can't do reus reusables. And if we want to really cut down on waste, we have to be doing reusables. The food service already has all the trays they need, all the silverware, bowls, all of that stuff. So now it's like we got to get them used. And again, I don't think this would have happened as quickly without the sustainability coordinator. Um, it there's been lots of discussion about healthier food, right? So that is sort of our our prime um, objective is looking at at that. And Sasha is very much on board about that. So looking at breakfast choices and reducing sugar, it goes along with what the um, oh, what is it the overall FDA? I mean, there's some big organization department that is going to mandate some reductions in sugar, which is great. So it's going to coincide with what the food service and Sasha have planned. And then the availability, the equity issue, especially breakfast is tough. The, mostly the only students who get to have breakfast are the ones who come by bus because they get there early. I mean, you're not going to get a lot of high school students up and out and into the schools early for breakfast. So Sasha's working very hard on um, better availability and having like period one or two, or I don't know how it works, open so that students are able to um, get breakfast at other times, not before the bell rings at 8.20 or 8.30 or whatever. And I guess Lincoln School is uh, has after the bell breakfast and they're doing really, really well. Like the access is tremendous at Lincoln. And so um, Sasha is looking at how to broaden that out to the other schools. Is there a policy um, issue there? I mean, if there's, uh, that just made my ears prick up because one of the things the school committee can intervene on are, is areas of policy. So if there if there's any policy recommendations that come out of that, that might be there's, something to recommend because this is yeah. something that we could take issue on. I don't want to interfere with building operations because there's, there's, there's logistics there that the school committee probably would be quite ignorant of. But if there's right. equity matters that the school committee could advance by, by passing policy, that would be something worthy of consideration, I would think. Yes, yes. I think, you know, the issue is now is they don't have food service staff in early enough, right, right. to do all the cooking of good meals and this and that before 8 a.m., before 8.30. So that's why if it's extended time into the school day, um, they could have better nutritious offerings and, and more but, availability. Uh, but that could also, like, for instance, the we're we just had our first read of the um, the budget guidelines for 24-25. And one of the guidelines that we issued wa was um, was uh, around uh, ESY for summer programming and making that more broadly available to students. So so just the, the equity, the, the extending the summer year first to make it more accessible to families to make sure that the, the pickup was more in line with the with, uh, with parents day, so they don't have to pick kids up in the middle of the day, for instance. Just just to say that equity matters can 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 trigger school committee, which currently is really invested, I think, in equity matters, to uh, to to make decisions that have budget um, consequences. Mm -hmm. so that could include, say, um, budgeting for additional staff to prepare meals for for prepare breakfast for instance so so that that could be within i just mean that that could be within your consideration for for recommendations yes yeah i see it probably definitely coming out of that um and i don't know perhaps the high school uh ezra has mentioned perhaps surveying high school students about the lunch menu that um, um, tastes change, right? Fads come and go and a uh, big push to have more vegetarian options. Um, I guess the kale, is it the kale? No, the kelp, kelp meatballs yeah. are 
supposedly very popular. <laughs> Have you had them, high school teachers or anybody? No, not yet. But uh, I tried one at the at your high school uh, winter garden event. They had the kelp meatballs, and they were good, Roger. I don't know if you had, if you tried them, but I was like, wow. They're better than the meatless ones, I thought. So there's a push for, for more um, healthy choices, vegetarian choices and all. So that's about where we're at. Does, so, so Dean, is, um, I mean, given that you're working with Sasha and Rebecca, right. what, what kind of inventory work is does the group need to do, do you think? It... Uh, we are lucky, right? So, yeah. so, uh, so Rebecca, as part of her job, is inventorying pretty much right. everything. So we have a great Excel sheet right now. Oh, um, that's cheating. Dishwashers everywhere, reusables everywhere, gardens actually. Like who has a garden, who doesn't? So we're in pretty good shape um, on on that. But there might be some areas that we haven't thought of. If anybody can think of any, but. Um, it's good. It's good having a sustainability staff person. Let me tell you, I feel I feel for all of you. I can't imagine how, how you're doing your your I, I charities. Have, uh, I have a question about the gardens that you mentioned just now, um, and just in general, is the new Pierce project being inventoried or the old Pierce? Uh, Meaning garden specifically? Well, well, that was one piece of it that I haven't been able to follow as much lately. But I know that when I had seen designs, some people had commented, well, the gardens that they drew in the preliminary drawings didn't seem like adequate mm. educational garden space. Um, but there'll be opportunity, you know, the, the, what, the feedback was there'll be opportunities to modify it, but I haven't been following it. So I'm just curious, again, the sustainability meetings coming up, but whether Rebecca has been able to kind of see what's coming in that space and influence it rather than wait till it's built. And then we say, Oh, I wish it was, you know, accessible yeah, that's a good, them. that's a good suggestion. We have, we haven't focused much on the garden. So this is good, good information to get back to Rebecca to get and into I, that. Yeah. And I would think anything else in the design again, in her role, maybe she's already being pulled in now or, or Sasha is pulled into like the actual needs in the kitchen to do the sustainability things that they're trying to implement across all the other schools, but it'd be a shame to build it and then realize it was not built well. And I think yeah, maybe I heard something like that at one of the other schools where like the location of the bins was not well suited. Yeah, you, you, heard, you heard correctly. <laughs> one to tap and put in the wrong electric dishwasher. And okay. so for two, year, two and a half years since yeah. they opened, they have not been yeah. able to use it. So these things do happen, but it's lost in translation between, you know, the architect and the whoever yeah. else. I mean, it's so, it gets so convoluted, but so you're bringing up a good point. It might um, be um, worth setting up a meeting at some point. I mean, maybe be just attending that meeting or having a separate call for different topics as we get and um, for the new building. So we, you know what's happening. I would say the gardens are our weakest link because that that is decentralized, right? And Rebecca doesn't really have much to do with the gardens. I mean, the gardens aren't providing food for food service to serve, really. Maybe a little tasting here and there, but and they is never it, will. It's don't an have intersection with the education, I would think, right? So there's right. this overlap, and then there's this intersection with the energy and buildings and outdoor space. <laughs> Um, so that I guess we should, we should all push on it in some way, or maybe have a separate call where we. I think Sasha is more interested in the in the um, in in the cafeteria, the the grow racks and lights because she can produce a lot and actually serve it, versus our the smallish gardens and the smallish land that we have. So yeah, I wonder if it's worth maybe this is getting ahead of ourselves, dedicating a coordination meeting later just to gardens because it's so um, it's so overlapping all the groups. I, I, I agree. Imagine, yeah, just to take like a holistic look at what recommendations 
relate to to school gardens and whether there's any um like uh, overarching recommendations for them that may not come out of one individual group which is all tasked with looking at a more micro aspect of gardens right maybe we can um, do that for march or something like that yeah no, good I'm idea like, i was just going to add just on the pierce issue with the redesign i mean i happen to run into uh tim hints the other day you know guidance counselor of pierce who's rushing off to like a building meeting for the new building for pierce and it sounded like they're still advocating to make or where that space would be mm. so it's more kind of central and visible um so as far as like what's going on with that uh, dean uh, do you know tim dean no okay so i i mean yeah. you know okay so are you dean, talking about make the garden more visible at the new pierce is that what you're talking about yeah making sure it has again i don't know that like the latest the original plan i think didn't really have it fully included and it was small and so i think him and a few others kind of advocated to get that more of a prominent um, dedication, you know, for space and so forth. But then it sounded like when I ran in the other day, he's still kind of working on advocating for that. So he would he would know what's going on with that most recently. And then Lauren O'Keen, you know, is to the extent that there's any centralization, you know, she's the one to talk to because she's she's the one that um, was able to get the grant so that each school has a garden coordinator with a you know, small stipend. Um, you know, the summer program I did with students, I got to interface with like six of the garden leaders or let's say six of the schools. So they're all kind of, you know, in different places. I mean, I would agree, it's probably more of a curriculum um, issue, but it doesn't have to be exclusively slotted there. Um, Cause again, like solar, whatever, it's like maybe not everyone's participating, but it does have the potential for transmitting, you know, values and you know, sustainability and that it's a central part of learning and, you know, on and on and on. So, um, but the schools are in a really different shape. This last thing I'll say is that, you know, but I mean, for teachers to manage that, it's, it's practically really a voluntary uh, thing yeah. and it's, it's hard to make that happen versus like at Ridley, you know, with Randy who has, you know, among the most incredible gardens you would ever walk into but he's like lives in the garden over the summer you know? <laughs> and he's like an ecologist by training so but did you say are the stipends for a teacher in each of the elementary schools for the gardens is that grant based so it's going to run out sometime soon or i'm not exactly sure the source i think it's i think it might be from office and teaching and learning that happened under leslie i think it's also the high school it just so happens I'm also the garden coordinator uh, for the high school, but you know it's like six hundred dollars a year to manage, you know, the garden, which is you know doesn't really cover the time required, but it's something. Um, you know, some I mean, really to make them fully, you know, aside from Randy, who's just so incredibly devoted and is so knowledgeable. You know, some of the other gardens, there's really devoted and committed people, but it's it's on their own time really. But, you know, like Pierce has this amazing um, integration and in curriculum where there's a um, uh, East Asia portion of the garden, there's a Sankofa garden, which grows traditional West African crops and foods and plants. Classes come, they help with plant, they sample, they have salad days, you know, to eat, um, make a salad out of the garden in like May or June. Um, but it's just, it's like a huge amount of work um, but it would be worth talking to Lauren and Tim, I would say for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to take a little time to go to group four because I don't want to run out of time before we get some time with Eric. So Eric, can, can you catch us up on group four transportation? Sure. We've, um, we are a very student heavy group and the students have, uh, met with Amy Ingalls a couple of times and have, uh, like first they were trying to figure out what even counted as transportation. And then they cut, we kind of like came up with, you know, a bunch of categories. Uh, and I would love to know if, if you guys can think of other things that might count as transportation, but the, they were, they were thinking school buses, walking bikes and, um, bikes, cars, and the MBTA. And 
I don't know if there's other stuff that would would count. And and you know, under each of those uh, categories, they, they the students kind of like tried to figure out what information they wanted. And they talked to Amy this um, this week and tried to uh, you know figure out if she could give them some of the information that they wanted. Um, she was able to. She said she was. She told them what she could help with. And then I think the other stuff is um, stuff that they have to get from the schools, um, either from central administration or from like individual uh, schools. And that, that is, and you know, so they 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 sort of have like a template for what information they want, and they more or less know who they're going to get it from. Some of the um, schools' information they they are not really sure um, who to ask. And okay. this so, is where I need to be more available. I'm sorry that I haven't been present for no, these. That's okay. Time. That's I think it's fine. I think they they now know what information they want, and I think you know we we I I don't think it should be take a terribly long time to get this information. Well, let um, me help. Let me help coordinate because great. this should be my. This is where I should be. Um, no, that's helping. Great. It's it's great if you can help and 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 uh, and. You know, I I don't I think it's very doable. Um, okay. So I I can I can like send you a um I can maybe send you an email that has kind of like here's here's what we need and you can tell me you can point me maybe in particular directions. Sure. Um, and I could yeah. take on some of the tasks as well. Okay, that would be great if it comes to liaising or coordination. Okay, that would be great. But they're they're also these these kids are very um, you know excited to actually talk to people. Okay. Had a great time talking to Amy, and Amy was really wonderful. And I'm happy you know, to make introductions and then to step away as well. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good. Um, yeah. So I I think I I think it's coming together, and uh, and and they already have lots of ideas about what recommendations they want to make, even though they don't. That's know. great. I I was thinking about this group uh, last week, and I was thinking. I just want to make sure that this that everyone in the group has read the policy too, because um, in some ways the the recommendations, the parameters for recommendations here seem the hardest because um, what's viable seems very limited to me um, by the town and they, by what's viable, and I'm sure they they realize that as well. Say more about that. What do you mean by uh, limited in its viability? Well, um, for instance, they're not going to renovate the bus fleet with a recommendation. We're, we're, you know what I mean? That that recommendation is going to be very hard to take on. Of course. Um, but um, but I mean, there's there's tremendous traction right now with bike lanes. There is a Warren article being, you know, this yes, year. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Um, so so some of the most impactful recommendations, I think. Would require building an advocacy movement to yes. the town, yeah. rather than having the school committee be able to take shorter, even medium-term action on it. So, yes, yeah. yes, I see what you're saying. I also think that they, that um, I also think that there would could be a you know a, a a a real significant role for the school committee to play in. Um, in helping to advocate for some of the, you know, townwide changes. I completely agree with you. Yeah. yeah. That would really help. And I think that the, um, you know, some of what the kids are talking about are things that the school committee could not, you know, and, and the school department could not do on its own, but that um, it would, yeah, a lot of the transportation issues are things that are, that are, that are many different players and, uh, and are going to need, you know, years of political work and that's, that's okay. Yeah, and it's also okay if a recommendation is that the school committee take on an advocacy role. Yes, I, I mean it's not a traditional role for the school committee, but but advocate to the town for X or Y. Right. It's within right. our. It's within our. I mean, we're all. I, I right. don't see why we. I don't see why that's an illegitimate recommendation. Right. And right. And so, um, in that vein, the um, the students are. Uh, trying to gather information right now, they they're doing a survey of um, of students at the high school about how they get to school. Um, we have the Safe Routes to School um, travel surveys that, uh, that that all of the, that the elementary schools have done that I think has pretty good information for the um, for students. They've also they also just wrote a um, survey for staff that um, I'm getting responses from high school staff 
staff about, and we're going to try to figure out how we can get responses from uh, K to eight staff as well. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So just so you know, um, the uh, as a result of the work Roger did, we have um, we have a, a, a an email address that we can use to send out the surveys. That okay, is a great. You may email address so we can if you want to coordinate with that with me on that too we could send it out from that address okay great um yeah i guess that i guess yeah i wasn't sure how to, i i hadn't really thought through how to get the survey to k to eight staff um so that would be yeah helpful. what is it betsy is it like sustainability task force at psbma.org or something like that i think Do so you know? let me uh, be checking that while we're talking okay i think it is that's cool. right. All one word, sustainability task force at psbma.org. Great. Okay. So we can use that to, to blast out surveys. Okay, cool. Cool. Great. That sounds terrific. Any questions for Eric? Anything that you feel stuck on or anything you want to mull over with the rest of us right now? Or? Uh, I don't think so. I'm... Um... Great. Okay. No, I think I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. Then we have a few minutes left. So what I want to ask is um, is uh, deadlines and formats for. Oh, go ahead, Roger. Well, it's maybe should come later and maybe not even in this meeting. But I just thought you know there's so much incredible stuff going on, um, but we're not really engaging the public yet. Uh, and I wondered if um, maybe using that email or maybe from the superintendent's office there could be like a quarterly sustainability report. And it's not, you know, it could just be sort of like what maybe each of the task force can subcommittees write, you know, a quick blurb and to kind of build some kind of excitement around that, not to add to more. You know, Hold that thought for a second, because before the yeah. meeting ends, we're going to do it and any, any other business. And then we can, I like, I love that suggestion. Um, I want to ask if, um, uh, by what date we want to propose closing the inventory phase of, of this task force's work. And, and I don't want to push you to do it. I just I want a reasonable deadline to move and then we'll move on to the recommendations phase. What do you think? What would work? So, so I if I could just I'm sorry I had to step away from my computer, but um could we, I don't, like, we could do the preliminary inventory and then put it out for feedback. Mm -hmm. Is that, like, so are you looking for the first preliminary or the final assessment date? Great question. Um, I was thinking final, but let's talk process. So do you want to, should we do draft, round of feedback, finalization? I think one round of feedback is probably sufficient. Yeah, that, that's a yeah, good I would idea. Think. Okay, so when do you think a draft could be ready for public feedback or for feedback? You say what, draft, what? the inventory kind of uh, mechanism. Are you saying like circulate it district wide or just get a few kind of you know people's? I, I had we. I think we need to discuss that too. Who we want to circulate it to, and in what format we want to circulate it. So maybe we'll pause on that question. Um, in what format do you think that I was? I was imagining a word document for the inventory that had some narrative and some tables or some bullets, but nothing more complicated than that. What were you? What were you imagining? I was thinking of a ta table, a table, a Google sheet. <laughs> What about the rest of you? So the curriculum survey, I think it's going to come back, you know, as a sheet as well. And that's, you know, was generated by a Google, Google form sort of survey. Um, but I, I guess I don't know if this is fitting exactly what you're saying. Are you saying the actual survey, getting more feedback on the survey that's going to go out or getting feedback on the survey results that come back? <laughs> So I guess I was envisioning the inventory um, deliverable to be something a little bit digestible other than like a raw data um, document. Mm -hmm. So it would be it would be a little bit of narrative and then 
some data in the document as well. So some some narrative that provides some analysis and draws some conclusions. That just describes what the inventory is. Like that we have this, we have that. There's a lot of this. There's not so much of that. We think there's some gaps here. We think there's some opportunities there. It doesn't have to be like a formal strengths, weaknesses, opportunities analysis or anything like that, problems analysis. But something with some narrative and some data. Chrissy, were you about to say something? Yeah, sorry, I was I was going to say something similar that um, I, I can imagine that the data table could be an appendix or something, but, um, you know, summarizing that, like, say with us, like which schools have solar, are solar ready, which ones have solar, you know, potential, or, you know, just itemizing what we've assessed across the different sustainability categories that we found um, were important. So maybe... Um, a short narrative makes sense. I think, yeah, I think the we could produce that probably. Again, we don't have a lot of data ready already collected. I'm hoping by the end of January, um, we could collect most of that data and maybe circulate something early February for um, community input. And I guess the input, who would give the input? I think there's a lot of community um, stakeholders that would be interested in kind of having a chance to voice um, both what, what we've assessed and maybe their thoughts on potential opportunities uh, that then our group could take into account when we write up our final recommendations. Yeah, I like the idea of putting the draft document on the PSB website, um, making an announcement that it's on the PSB website, maybe in the superintendent's um, report, and then also reaching out to some specific groups whose um, feedback we'd be particularly interested in, just saying like, hey, just so you know, this is on the website, we really would be interested in hearing from you, what you think um, we missed, whether we uh, could get additional information on this or that. For our group, we were potentially going to lean on um... This person doesn't know this yet, but uh, the person who did all the sort of beautiful slides for the student sustainability survey. Um, so, you know, I could kind of imagine it as some Google slides, you know, some graphs, data, whatever, sampling of that, a couple narrative pieces, and then like someone said, you know, put the rest of it kind of in appendix. But I have no idea how, you know, it could be that 12 people respond. In which case, it's right. you know, not going to be very representative. Ian, Eric, what do you think? What would what feels right? We don't have to have the same format for all of it either. Right. I mean, a narr narrative, a short narrative, and you know, the data in a, in a table um, as a. I like the preliminary inventory idea, and then circulating it because I think we'll miss some some things that people think we should be um, tracking or finding out about. And then I'm thinking the final inventory, I don't know, does that have, that, that has to go out before the rec final recommendations, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, maybe we can, maybe we can, um, maybe we could try to get a draft out at the, maybe February 1st or something like that. And then leave it, ask for feedback within two weeks and then try to get a final version out in early March, and then and then go from there. So I guess the way I was imagining it, the feedback would be an opportunity for people to both give information about our inventory and you know priorities. Um, so they could kind mm -hmm. of give some of the feedback about the priorities. There may be another opportunity, obviously, once we've come out with the final report, for people to give community feedback. But um, so rather than having to do the final, so, so our final report will include both the finalized inventory and the recommendations, rather than adding a whole nother iteration there. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, I also had, I just have a comment that I noticed, as Roger, as you were talking, it made me realize the way you're doing your survey of educators in, to do the assessment is very different than maybe what some of us are doing because it's more about well actually not sure but um right. 
you know, there's, there is or isn't certain energy efficiency practices at certain buildings, right? So it's, it's a different thing. So I do think it's really important that we get a good survey response rate. And I don't know to what extent, Stephen, you think we can get teachers, uh, like pr principals to kind of shout it out or request it, trying to get a representative sample of grade level teachers to respond to it. Um, yeah. You know, in the past, we've had, you know, discussions about going, getting a, a principal to bring it up at staff meetings or, I don't know, can we provide some sort of reward <laughs> for people who take it, maybe like a raffle or <laughs> something um, yeah. to, get, um, to get people to take it. Okay. Because you don't want just the people that are doing sustainability work to respond to it. I think right. Right. you want to get a representative sample. Yeah. Well, yeah, Stephen, I think has, and maybe in our last meeting, I can't remember, but we talked about asking other people in the district who are in like coordinator positions in Office of Teaching and Learning to, you know, resend that. Our thought was that we were going to try to send it before break, hopefully like next week, so it's not too close to break, give people a deadline, and then after break, extend the deadline a little bit, you know, by maybe a couple of weeks or something to um, uh, solicit more you know, feed uh, input into the survey. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, and Stephen, you're going to help with this. It sounds like, you know, to get uh, curriculum coordinators and, yeah, you know, the deputy superintendents in office of teaching and learning to help get that out yeah. there. I mean, I'll, contact, I'll, I'll contact Dr. Fortuna as well, and I'll ask for assistance with that. Yeah. Um, okay, the last question is, Friday at 4 p.m. Is that a good time for our next coordination meeting or is that just a sad, sad time to meet? It's hard to get this group together. It's it is, a pretty sad time. <laughs> but I'm okay with it. I can embrace the sadness and meet at this time. This, okay. This, yeah, this time often works for me. There are some rare Fridays where I can't do it, but often it does work. Yeah. Okay. So I'll work with Betsy to put something on our calendar for early January for our next meeting. Not too early. Sounds good. Okay. This was good. This was helpful and we, to hear. Lastly, um, we have on our on our docket any other business. I really like your suggestion, Roger, of proposing some quarterly more public update, letting people know how this how the climate task force, climate sustainability. We have to have a catchy name. A climate sustainability task force is doing. Um, Should we all just write up like a sentence or two, and then, and uh, and we could we could ask uh, Dr. Guillory to put that in his in his superintendent's update. What do you think? Yeah, I you know I still like to kind of see like a heading, you know, beginning the new quarterly make up whatever period of time sustainability update. This the task force one or two sentences. This is what each group is doing one or two sentences something like that you'd also reach out to uh kathy butler to see if if uh green zine would print something on us or to sam mintz if brookline news would want, want to print something on that yeah yeah definitely yeah like I, I, don't, I think this group deserves some publicity yeah. <laughs> i'll send everyone to uh to dean <laughs> all right I think I think that'll do it. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks for thanks, so thanks for the conversation.